What's up, Dodgers Nation? It is us. We are back. We wanted to introduce you to the, well, I mean, he's the latest face around the Dodgers, uh, well, virtual locker room for now. He is the latest media member to step in. He is... Uh, spent the past couple of seasons covering the Rays. Yes, those Rays that we just beat in the World Series. Yeah. Juan, we'll have to forgive us for that. Um, spent some time with The Athletic, then MLB.com, former fan-sided guy, SB Nation guy. He's kind of been all over the place, does everything. Jack of all trades, Juan Toribio, or Juan Toribio. Also. Nice, nice. I, I, I had to nail the pronunciation for you, man. I, I mean, I took four years of Spanish. I got to do something right in my life, right? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> no, yeah, thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, of course. Welcome to LA. I mean, virtually, welcome to LA, I guess. Uh, how are you settling in in the first couple of weeks on the on the beat? It's been good. It's been fun. It's been kind of crazy. Um, over the last couple of years, I've been so focused on everything that has to do with the Rays, major league team, minor league team. And then out of nowhere, none of that mattered anymore. <laughs> it's like, it's like brand new team. I had to learn everything all over again, but it's, it's been a lot of fun. Everyone's been really helpful. I'm actually still in Florida. Um, I'm moving in next month to LA. So I'm looking forward to that. It's going to be kind of crazy with spring training kind of happening somewhere, somewhere there in the middle. So, um, but I'm, I'm pretty excited. Yeah. You're, uh, you're, you're at the, this point where you're still, kind of learning the team like you'd said you know you've only been doing this now for for a few weeks on this side you still got to figure out how you're going to get over to this coast and what quite uh, your life's going to look like in a month but you know the job is still at hand the task at hand you got to learn about this new team uh what are some of the the early takeaways you're, you're getting from uh as brooke said the team that beat your uh, former <laughs> club uh what are you learning about the dodgers so far well, it's, it was actually really helpful that I was covering the Rays last year and getting to see the Dodgers in, in the World Series kind of you know up close and personal because there's not many surprises. Like, I knew how good they were um, in October, and now I definitely know how good they are now. So in terms of familiarity, it's it's been pretty helpful that I saw them in October. But, yeah, I mean, I, I think everybody knows how good this team is. I don't think I quite realized how good they were. Um, just kind of seeing all the other stats and all, you know, baseball savant and fan graphs and stuff like that, kind of digging into a lot of those things. It's like, man, I knew they were good, but like, they're incredibly good. Like they're historically good. Um, so it's, it's going to be a lot of fun kind of seeing how it all plays out. You know, the bullpens, it's, it's going to be a little bit different. Um, Andrew Freeman made sure of that here today before we got on, on this call, but uh, it's going to be an interesting year. I'm getting familiar, not only with the Dodgers, but the NL West in general, I mean, honestly, the whole, the entire national league, like when you're in the American league and you're kind of covering an American league team, you're so focused on, in my case, the Yankees, the Red Sox, the Blue Jays. Um, so I, I don't think, I don't remember the last time I saw a Rockies game. I think it was like the 2019 when, when they came to the trap. So it's going to be interesting getting in all those, all those guys. And it's crazy. It's been, it's been a crazy couple of weeks for sure. Yeah. I mean, you talk about just how good the team is in general and obviously the trades happening today. It's just like a continuity of a, of, we've seen in the past of teams that go all out win the world series and then kind of just sell out for the next couple of years. Um, it doesn't seem to be the case with Andrew Friedman and the Dodgers, and it doesn't really seem like it's slowing down anytime soon, but you also come in at a time where there's a lot of turnover within the team. Um, and by a lot, I mean more than we're actually used to. We lose guys like Kike Hernandez. We lose guys like Jock Peterson. Um, Pedro Baez has been a part of the bullpen for so long. Alex Wood has been around, even though he's been traded back and forth a little bit. Um, but coming into this new team and seeing all these new faces pop up relatively new to us, not necessarily to you. Uh, what are, I mean, what are your early takeaways from this team in terms of what to expect for the 2021 season? And who do you, are there any names in there that you're like, these guys are going to shine throughout the course of the year or just as a whole? Yeah. Well, kind of to your first point, I, I think the two things that I kind of have going for me, I guess, is, you know, Andrew Freeman obviously built everything that the Rays are now. So kind of getting familiar with the way that he does things or the way that the Rays did things is helping me kind of figure out why Freeman and company do the things that they do. Um, and the turnover that, that I'm definitely, I'm definitely accustomed to. I mean, the Rays, their roster looks completely different from year to year. Um, so in terms of that, like, I'm glad that I kind of have like that familiarity of like, all right, this is how this guy operates. Cause it's pretty similar to, the, to how the Rays did it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think the one guy, which I'm actually kind of excited to see play in person is Will Smith. I think, I think he's the one guy that everything I, I've seen and, and just kind of read and, you know, everything, all the due diligence is just, this gets a stud. And, you know, when you're in this lineup and you have Betts and Bellinger and Seager and, and all those guys, I feel like it's pretty easy for you to go under the radar. Mm -hmm. But this guy might be 
you know, he has the potential to be the best hitting catcher in the National League. And, and you, know, you know, obviously JT Riomuda will have something to say about that. But I think he's the one guy where I'm like, man, this this guy's really good. And he doesn't get talked about as much. Or maybe I didn't know much about him. I'm, I'm sure you guys know him pretty well. So he's the one guy of everyone, which is kind of like a, a random a random pick. But um, I, li- I like him. I think he's going to be pretty good and just kind of fit you know, fit in really well in that lineup. I think that's uh that's music to Brooks ears right there. Very high on Will Smith. He's a big time catching guy. And I'm sure you've seen, uh, you know, a lot of the catching depth. We'll kind of dig more into the prospect side of things a little bit, but you know, now as you're, you're familiarizing yourself with, with the organization more uh, like a great point, by the way, to come from one former Friedman, or fleeceman, as we call them around here, uh, organization. Which I just I just found that out today. Yeah. I, I had no idea about that. That's, well, that's pers- big on the internet, really. First, yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that, that's the big one on the internet. Personally, in house, we call them little NDF because why not? We're just you know we, we got to have something uh, uh, fun for a podcast, I guess, and people will hate you for it. Uh, but what's what's been uh, organization wise? What would you say has been like uh, the the biggest shock or surprise or just weirdest thing that you've learned? Because a lot of people come over and they they talk about class organization. What's uh, what's your takeaway or what's your stance? Yeah, well, everyone's in terms of the personal side, everyone's been really welcoming. So I'm I'm pretty thankful for that because that's not always the case. Mm-hmm. But I, I think just how how smart they are. Honestly, like I, I got to work with a lot of really smart people in Tampa. You know, Neanders, it, it's one of the best in, in the business. And just seeing, you know, when you think of a big market team, when you're covering a small market team, you just think about, you know, especially the Yankees, who I'm pretty familiar with, it's like, all right, they just throw a bunch of money at people and this is how they win. And when you come here, like, obviously they have the, the ability to do that. We saw that yesterday with, with Bauer being formally announced, but they, they're just also really smart on just how they operate things and what they look at, um, which has also been really helpful uh, like w- w- with Vesia today, I know that the spin rates probably would have jumped out to Dodgers front office because that's the same thing that would have happened in Tampa. So like those things, it's been really helpful to kind of. It's actually been really interesting to see that. Like you obviously heard about Neander, how he can, he's a he's a Freeman a guy, um, but seeing it act, like actually firsthand has been like incredible. It's like oh man, these guys are like the same thing. Like even just talking to them, it's like you talk to them and it's like the same person. It's it's been really weird. Um and just have kind of having some back and forth with the, with both of them has been has been really cool. Um I would imagine but yeah, the, just, uh, just how the, smart they are. I would imagine the biggest difference between the two is the budget though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's it's slightly different. Like it's it's actually funny because Bauer gets you know 40 million or whatever. And I think when I made the move uh, the Rays hadn't spent on Archer and a couple of those other guys. I think it was like 38 million as a team. So, like, I, I was joking to some of my bosses, like, yeah, slightly, it's a little, a little bit different over here, you know. Just a, tad. Just a, a little tad. bit of a different lifestyle out here. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. But, you know, you see a lot of the similarities between the two sides, and and obviously the growth of Andrew Friedman, and now he has a couple of his clones scattered throughout Major League <laughs> Baseball, which is cool to see. But also, you you get to come into a time um, into the NL West where maybe the most exciting time in the NOS that we've had in a long time. Obviously when the giants were at the top of their game, that was a lot of fun. There was like a very, very brief period where the diamondbacks were really good and a very brief period where the Rockies were pretty competitive. Um, but now it looks like the Padres are around to compete and who knows for how long that will be. But for, for now it looks like they're going to be an actual challenge to the Dodgers. If at the end of the season, the Padres somehow find a way to usurp LA for a division title, what would have had to go wrong for the Dodgers in your mind? I think probably the bullpen. Um, I think the bullpen got kind of going south. And like, I'm not one. I'm not big on on bullpens having roles. I mean, I, I kind of saw that with, with the Rays, and they were just throwing anybody in the sixth inning and then in the ninth inning. Um, but I think there is something to be said about a bullpen just kind of believing that the guy who's coming into a game is going to get it done, and kind of not feeling some pressure there. And th- and most of the faces are the, are the same, but there are some new faces, and I think. Part of that is going to come, you know, and, and there are going to be injuries, unfortunately, in, in the COVID-19 world, you know, hopefully everyone stays safe. But I mean, there's, there's always that possibility as well. So I think if, if that would ha- if that would happen, it would have to be, you know, the bullpen structure didn't work out as well as the Dodgers probably hope, hope it, it will. Mm-hmm. But it's also that's also really hard to see. I mean, it's a really talented bullpen. I mean, mm-hmm. If you talk about, you know, Gonsolin and May potentially being in there, it makes it even that that much better. So. Um, but yeah, if I had to pick one, it would probably be the bullpen. I, I'm, I'm a pretty big bullpen guy. So 
Um, I think that that'll be my answer. Yeah, we uh, saw. We I would say, oh, go ahead, Brooke. I'll let you. I, I was just gonna say the good news is you're joining a uh, a fan base that is incredibly passionate about the bullpen uh, in the sense that they will let you know when they are disappointed in the bullpen. So I like that. I, I'm yeah. I'm a big fan of that. Get yeah. get ready for a uh, a lot of things to show up on your timeline and on your Twitter and things like that when something goes wrong. Uh, when a bullpen loses a game for the Dodgers, it it is a bad time. So. I hope you're ready for that. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. And, and I would say one of the keys, uh, the keys to success last year, particularly in the postseason, was kind of going into that, that uh, less reliant on bullpen, bullpen roles, right. save for um, Kenley Jansen. That's usually where they draw the line. Kenley's a ninth inning guy. And there's a lot that is going to be a lot of ink. You're going to have to be writing uh, online, online ink uh, th- this year, just because, I'm sure you've seen some of the headlines. I'm sure you've done some of the research. He's good, but then there's just those blowups and, and, and the team will stick with him and he's earned it. I mean, you don't, you don't save more than 300 games without earning it, but uh, yeah, I think you might get that more. Uh, you'll be, you might be in familiar territory in seeing a less uh, role driven team and we're seeing all these different arms pop in. So it, it's definitely shaping up that way. Um, team being as deep as they are, there's different arms that could kind of pop in. One of the questions we love, because we're, we're big time prospect guys here as well. Uh, in, in your early research, who, what's been uh, one of the prospects that just really stood out to you that you're excited for? Yeah, I think I have a couple. Um, on the pitching side, um, I like Arrillo a lot. Um, like, I mean, he throws hard, and if they want to put him into a bullpen role, I, I could see him making a jump all the way to the big leagues this year. You know, if they want him to start, probably not. But if, you know, if this just want a guy who's going to throw 100 out of the bullpen, which I love. I, I love guys that throw, that throw 100. I mean, who doesn't? But uh, I, I like him a lot. Uh, obviously, Jojo Gray, um, everything that he brings to the table, he's probably going to be the eighth guy in, in that rotation, um, which is nuts to even say. <laughs> yeah. Um, Mitch White. And then on the position player side, I, I, like, I like Michael Bush a lot. Um, I think he's, he's going to be a, a really good player. I like McKinstry. Um, I don't know if – still kind of considered a prospect, I guess he, yeah. he is. Um, so I like those guys. I, I still think I, I, he's not on, a, on, a, on our prospect list at least, but I think Gavin Lux mm-hmm. uh, is one of those guys who, who's, who's he, he's going to benefit from a more normal, I guess you can call this normal year yeah. um, in 2021, like just 2020 is, it's, it's just so hard for every player. And then when you consider a younger player, like, I mean, it was a nightmare for those guys. So yeah, I think 2021 it'll be a big year for Gavin Lux, and I think I think he's gonna step up. Yeah, Gavin is definitely a guy around these parts that we're looking forward to getting a more consistent opportunity and getting you know hopefully you hope in 2021 a more ideal circumstance to get into spring training and get rolling and get right when you need to get right and get the work in and not have to start and stop all year long. So we're looking forward to that. But uh, Juan, before we let you go, we know you're a really busy guy and it's trade season apparently on Fridays for the Dodgers these days. It is, yeah. <laughs> it's just all Fridays now. Um, we want to kind of just let our fans, let Dodgers fans just get to know you a little bit. We had Ken Gurnick on the beat for so long and we honestly didn't know that much about Ken because yeah. <laughs> Ken, great, one of the legends, one of the absolute greats, um, definitely old school guy, but also uh, just incredibly good at his job. But we want to get to know the new guy around the Dodgers press box. Um, so I'm going to, we're just going to throw a couple things at you real quick. If you want to yeah, rapid, uh, rapid fire ish rapid fire enough. Um, the first one was thought on analytics because we want to know your stance on, I guess, how the modern game is viewed and how it's measured. Yeah. I, I have no problem with them. I think, I think we kind of saw this in game six, uh, of the world series a little bit, you know, you can't rely on them all the time, I guess. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, if you're going to be consistent, you have to be consistent all the way through. And, and that's, I guess that's what Kevin Cash decided on. So I'm a big fan of them. Um, I look at them as much as I possibly can. But at the same time, sometimes you just got to let the, the guys play a little bit. Um, I know that's like the, the boring answer, but <laughs> I'm a big fan of analytics. I think if I say otherwise, Neander and Freeman would probably call me. Oh, yeah. um, but big fan of it. Sometimes just let the, let the kids play, I guess. That's that's reasonable. That's fair. It's a it's a very fair take in the modern day when you know your front office is uh, is looking at you. Um, your guys watch <laughs> baseball. You watch a lot of baseball games over the years. What is your take on these uh, these new rules we got in 2020 and now in 2021? Well, in spring training, I love the fact that they can bang a game after five innings. I right. will say that. I mean, I love I love that. 
Uh, that needs that needs to keep that needs to stay moving forward. But um, as a fan, I probably don't like. I, I, as a fan, I definitely don't like the man on second and extra innings. Um, as a reporter who's trying to get home sometimes, um, I don't mind not not seeing fifteen inning games anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I can definitely see why fans don't like that. And and honestly, it, it does take away from from kind of the intrigue of an extra inning. Um, so I don't like that. Uh, Universal DH, I'm, I think I don't think anyone's not for that. And if you're if you like watching pitchers hit, I don't I, I don't know I don't know if I can help you much <laughs> much there. Um, what's the other one? I forgot the other one. Uh, Oh, the, the double header, the double headers. Yeah, I, I'm fine with the double headers. I, I don't think guys want to play 18 innings in one day, and that, yeah. that hurts you moving forward. Like, actually, a couple of years ago, the Rays played. The, I'm sorry to go back to the Rays so much, but the, the Rays played the Twins for 18 innings, and then like the next day, like it was an automatic loss because they were like not, they were just not having it. They were like, dude, I'm exhausted. I don't even want to come to the ballpark today. So I'm fine with the, the seven innings. Um, I think 14 innings in one day is, is, is enough. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, I think I, I like those. I just don't, I don't like the men on second. Um, but like I said, not seeing 16 inning games anymore. Yeah. I, I'm the, cool with that. Do you think the, the three batter rule, the three batter minimum rule did what, uh, what they hoped it would do or. I don't think it did what they hoped it would do. Cause it, I don't think it reduced the, the time of games, yeah. but I actually, I actually don't think it was as big of a deal as I thought it was going to be. All uh, of us but, really. Yeah. yeah, like I think, like I mean, Adam Cleric is a is a perfect example. Like I, I actually covered him in Tampa as well, and like he was a big left-handed hitter guy. Like it was just gonna be against a lefty, lefty all the time, and we saw how good he is at doing that. But he was also pretty good against right-handers. So um, I don't think I don't think that played in a big role. Um, I just don't think it did the the desired purpose of trying to speed up the game. Yeah. Yeah. I would definitely agree with that. Uh, that was one of those rules that I thought was going to be a drastic, uh, league altering, uh, you know, hist- historical benchmark for baseball. And it turned out ruining to be, the game. Right, <laughs> it turned out to be not that big of a deal, but the, the uh, purists were, were not having it. They yeah. were not, they're not having a lot of it. And, and you know what, and for, to be fair in 2020, it was like, look, whatever it takes to get baseball going, I don't care what you guys want to do. I just want to watch baseball in 2020. Sure. Get it moving. So I think uh, people were able to sacrifice a little bit on that end, but we kind of want to get your feelings about the game just in general, how you feel about bunts, because we are really big on small ball around here but it turns out that it's becoming <laughs> less and less of a, a favorite around major league baseball and hey, you got uh, a dead uh, ball now though that's gonna that's true the, the comeback yeah I, I i hate bunting i mean <laughs> if if you're like uh, i'm not gonna say i hate it that's a strong word but like if it's the ninth inning and you need to score a run sure but if i don't know like if it's the sixth inning and you're i don't know i just like the guys hitting like I, i'd rather you hit the try and hit the ball Cause I mean, these days, like, especially with, with the three, three outcomes, shit, like the three real outcomes, it's just right. like, it's, it's going to be a strikeout or you're probably going to hit a home run. So it's just like, we're, let's see what's a bunt going to do. Um, so I, I'm not big on the bunts. I don't know. I, I, I haven't thought about it too much lately. American league, they don't, they don't bunt uh, very often. <laughs> So I'm not big on bunts, but I, I could, I could be convinced. I could be convinced otherwise. If, if the Dodgers win like seven games because of a bunt, then I'll, I'll, I'll come back on the show and I'll, I'll, I'll be a pro <laughs> bunt guy. So as of now, we could, we could put it in the record. Juan does not like big bunts. Thank you. I, Sorry. Yeah. I apologize to everybody. Uh, one final one. I'm always kind of curious because there's, there's, um, there's there's really two different uh, schools of thought on it or, or two different people when it comes to a ball game. Do you prefer that slugfest or do you prefer uh, a pitcher's duel? I'm trying to think about this one for a second. Uh, take your um, time. <laughs> that's a good question. I mean, I get uh, it, dude. It's a, it's a, that's, that is a good question. Cause I saw so many like three to two, four to three games the last couple of years. Uh, yeah. uh, and I thought they were all really interesting. But a lot of the times, it just felt like I was watching the same game all over again. Um, so yeah, screw it. I'll go with I'll go with a slugfest. Like, I, I, give me give me runs. I mean, it, it, the fans like it. I think we yeah. all like it. Uh, man, I don't know. I, I, I'm I'm changing it again because like a two to one game, like that. It's just exciting from start yeah. to finish. 
Yeah, there's the other one. You have the fireworks of the slugfest, and trust you're going to get plenty of them when it comes to the Dodgers. I mean, they tend to open, uh, you know, have opening day with like, you know, eight, nine thousand home runs in a game or whatever. You saw what happened in that 11 run first inning against Atlanta. The Dodgers can do some crazy things, but they could also uh, get you with the the defense if they um, uh, if they're not the slugging isn't going so well. So um, we'll, that's we'll, what makes that's what makes them so good, right? I mean, that they can so we'll win double I, back. I We'll double back after a full season of Dodger baseball under your belt. We'll see where you're at when you have both sides. Yeah, I, yeah, I have to see what like what kind of irks me a little bit about watching a new team and, and right. what I like. Um, like if you ask me about the Rays, like, I can tell you exactly what I didn't like and exactly what I did like um, after watching them for three years. But yeah, one year in, you know, what is it? February what twelfth? Next year we'll we'll do this again and then <laughs> i'll give you an updated about a uh, big bunts and and all, all the other go. things <laughs> we'll definitely need to circle back on it because you're going to have a lot of new information you're going to have a lot of new experiences with people online and on twitter and things and you're going to be a completely different person this either time. that or everyone will just be annoyed by of me by that yeah. be cool enough. that's no, okay I, we're all annoyed at each other online that's what we do yeah. on twitter that's, that's the purpose that's true yeah <laughs> stay, yeah stay off the internet for a while you'll you'll enjoy yourself get settled in We'll we'll see you in the uh, the Zoom meetings and all that, and hopefully we can get some good stuff out of Doc. The fun's about to start, man. Welcome, uh, welcome to LA. Welcome to the team. Uh, we're excited to have you. Hopefully, you can keep doing some good work around uh, around the boys in blue, and and you could be on the right side of the winning uh, the final game <laughs> this year, and not have to yeah. write about Blake Snell getting pulled. It'll be Walker Bueller shoving or Trevor Bauer shoving or Kershaw throwing potentially his last pitch in Dodger blue going to be a lot of fun, man. You're going to have a lot of good uh, storylines and we look forward to seeing them. I appreciate it guys. Thanks for having me. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be, it's going to be a lot of fun, not just this year, but I think in the next couple of years as well.